for your hand being upon his life and blessing him and for blessing all of this family, Lord. We thank you and we give you praise and we thank you for this special day, Lord, uh, in Sam's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, Sam. Okay. Oh, I have I have a bunch of commitments. <laughs> I, I could I could mention one thing too. A barbarica means son of the blessing. Uh, the Jewish people have the same version as bar mitzvah. You probably heard of a bar mitzvah. That's when a child goes from a son goes from twelve to childhood to manhood. So that's the the Jewish version is son of the law. That's what bar mitzvah means. Son of the blessing is the barbarica, and it's the messianic version. And uh, uh, family foundations put this together and um, take things through, and, and uh, so it's it's kind of the same thing, and it, it it really has an effect. I don't know if you ask my sons that have gone through it. Five of them have. It actually has an effect on you know how they deal with life. Because all of a sudden, oh, I'm, I'm responsible now for me to go this way instead of go through my parents to go this way, you know? It's kind of that kind of a thing. And uh, um, it's been very effective. We've been so blessed. And uh, first they get a purity ring and, and uh, those kind of things. And you'll hear what he's gonna say now uh, as part of you know what he's thinking about as he enters into manhood. He's probably been there for three or four years already. <laughs> Usually they go a little earlier, uh, but because he's the last one, we try and hang on as long as possible. So uh, go ahead, Sam, and you can say what uh, your commitments. I dedicate my life to serving Jesus Christ and whatever he calls me to. And from now on, I take responsibility for my own actions and seeking God's design and purpose in my life. I commit to learn and live according to God's seven non-optional <coughs> principles of life. They are design, leading into self-acceptance, responsibility, leading to good conscience, authority, leading to proper submission, suffering, leading to f full forgiveness, ownership, leading to yielding rights, freedom, leading to moral purity, success, by engrafting scripture. Engrafting. engrafting, sorry. I will all honor all legitimate authority in my life, parents, pastors, teachers, and police. I choose to honor my parents as a lifelong relationship. I am grateful to them for being willing to do hard work of character development with me. I dedicate myself to proper steward stewardship with, of wealth and money. I commit to seek godly friendship and courtship as opposed to dating. I will pursue purity and exemplify the love of Jesus throughout my life. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah. Now is uh, uh, Don and Lisa's turn to make their commitments. By the way, Samuel's number six. He has six <laughs> boys. Some of you don't know us. So, uh, anyway. Um, we did go through all of these points with him beforehand, so he's not just pulling it out of a hat. He's, we've discussed all of these points with him, and um, it's our goal to see him prosper in life. So we're going to pass the next Okay. Uh, we probably should have practiced that. <laughs> we, we commit to, to love, love our, our son Samuel, Samuel and, to and to pray, pray for, for him regularly. regularly. We commit to teach him God's principles of life. We will continue to honor him with open communication and understanding. We propose to be available, to be available for counsel. Purpose, I'm sorry. We will partner in prayer with him regarding God's choice and timing of a marriage partner. We will continue to apply age-appropriate godly discipline to his life as God directs for character development. Okay, then Lisa gets to pray over Sam, blesses him. So, Samuel, you're my baby. <laughs> and I, 
I think this is probably harder for me because of that. And I know that I've somewhat coddled you and spoiled you, but I've had fun doing it. <laughs> That's a <nice> thing. <laughs> but as um as we've had lots and lots of talks and prayer times together, um, it has been a delight to see you develop your walk with the Lord personally and to see you step into leadership at church. And it's been um, it's been great to see you working on the hard parts of life and sincerely wanting to have a relationship with God. One of the things that that stands out to me as I look back at your life is your openness to hear from the Lord. And um, I remember when you were two and we were lying on my bed and you, I was trying to get you to take a nap. And you, you looked over toward the closet and you said, hey, there's your angel and there's my angel. And you, and you were not prompted by me, I didn't say anything to you, but I noticed that you had already an open communication with God and seeing things, and, um, and it's always been a delight to see, um, to see your openness for the supernatural and for, for communicating with the Lord and hearing Him and pressing in, and I know there have been many times that you have um, needed to hear from God about a choice in your life. And you have sought him until you heard from him, and that's been such an honor as a mother to see um, to see you develop. Because I think as parents, we're more than just parents; we are making disciples. And I've always thought it was such an honor that the Lord would think that your dad and I were capable of raising six men of God. It's a big responsibility, and. Um, I just want to say thank you for for being open with me and for letting me pour into your life. So I just want to pray for you. God, I thank you for Samuel. I thank you for um, even the meaning of his name. Ask of God, heard of God. And how, Lord, that has exemplified already in his life. And I pray, Lord, that you would um, continue to grow him into the man that you've called him to be and to be a man after your own heart. I pray for protection over him. I pray, Lord, that when the enemy comes in to trip him up and to cause him to go in a way that's ungodly, Lord, that you would snatch him away from the hand of the enemy and bring him into um, a place of courage to stand against the enemy and to stand up for righteousness. I pray that you would surround him with godly people and godly friends and help him to be an influence to those friends of his that are not in relationship with him. And I just bless Samuel right now with the ability to step into being a man from being a child and to step in to uh, responsibilities that come with that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to have the men over here. And we're going to call Samuel to come cross over to where the men are so we can pray for him. So, if, you gentlemen, if you could stand over here, please. You want me to hold the no Mm hmm. So you guys call Samuel over. Okay, this uh, men call Samuel to come and uh, to cross. It's kind of like a, a, a physical version of crossing from childhood into manhood. So when he gets over here, then anyone who feels led can pray for him. And I'll probably be the last one to pray for him, and then he'll close and. Uh, and then we'll pray, pray for the food. Other people can oh, other people can also pray for him yeah. or challenge him or whatever. Yeah, if the Lord's giving you something that you you want to say or uh, you you feel the Lord speaking to you about, you know, uh, uh, a blessing, any kind of 
any kind of thing like that, you see, uh, you're all welcome to do that. But right now, Samuel, would you uh, come on over into manhood? We'll do a little dance. And, uh, <laughs> we should have brought our guitars. As we said, right? but, uh, my phone just went out. So anybody feel led to pray for us? Lord, we thank you for Samuel, and I pray the blessing of Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But he told me, meditate on my word day and night, that it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Bring us forth the fruit of the season, and whatsoever he does, we will prosper. Remember that, Samuel, for the rest of your days, and review it. Keep the, the Lord's word in your heart. Amen. Any the other brothers like to pray for him? I'd like to say something, Samuel. You know, you're the last of the six out of the shoot. And, um, credit to your grandparents and your parents, they have created an environment for you to grow. It's not been an accident. None of the other five guys, it hasn't been an accident. It was purposeful and it was intentional. And there's a, I know there's been tears and there's been prayers because I have prayed and I've had tears from my own daughter and that was what was done for me, so I, I know. The one thing I recognize it in you is you have compassion. That's a rare quality in a man, is compassion. When you're following the steps of Jesus, where the word tells us he was moved with compassion. I noticed that when you were going to go to India, you had a bird's eye view, a front view of what it was like to be out of water. So you could identify with the folks who needed water for a well. And I remember your plea the night at, at the church when we did the concert that help these people they need water because you have been there you knew so compassion is a great trait and I just want to pray a blessing over you that you would be like Samuel in the Old Testament when the Lord speaks that you will <coughs> Lord I just pray over Samuel that you would give him listening ears and an obedient heart he has those, but develop it greater, Lord. I pray that you would use him in his prayers for miracles, signs and wonders, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I bless you, Samuel, in Jesus' name. Amen. I appreciate your hugs every time I see you, too. God bless you. May, uh, may Yahweh bless you, and when you follow in the the patterns of our Heavenly Father, you will be blessed too. If not in this life, then in the coming kingdom. I'll we'll share something. Uh, Samuel and I had a, we've had a lot of special experiences. One of them was taking a paraglider together up to 14,000 feet, which is not easy. And it's scary. And it's cold. And uh, you, you start at 7,000 feet and then you work very hard. And you have to have somebody, I'm a pilot, but you still have to have a passenger that's willing and able. And I admire Samuel's uh, bravery and willingness to try things that are wild. <laughs> and uh, we were able to climb, we got in a good thermal. And, after crossing 10,000 feet, which was already exceptional, we aimed for 11,000. We got there. We said, shall we go to 12? We got there. We tried to get to 13. We got there. We got to 14,000. We're looking across directly eye to eye with the top of Mount Shasta. <laughs> I'm emotional as I say it because it was wild. It's the highest I've been. And I got to share that incredible experience together with Samuel. And uh, when you get that high, first of all, I was just amazed that he was still willing. I've never been able to take somebody, I've never had the chance to go that high, and he was willing, because many of my passengers, out of 110 passengers, 
plenty have thrown up on me. <laughs> many, many get nauseous and we have to go land. But he was still willing to try. <laughs> and then the whole earth is really flat by then. You're so high. And we're like, shall we go? And we just went cross country <coughs> over the mountains and landed in a beautiful valley uh, about seven miles away. And um, the whole thing was amazing, but it, it just got me excited about Samuel's willingness to try things. I've always seen that Samuel's willing. And uh, I look forward to hearing what adventures he has in his life as he just tries things, but with, as others have said, with compassion, with an eye for the needy, with an eye to help others. And I think he has a great future to just go and serve the Lord, honor him and help others in whatever he does. So I want to just pray a prayer of blessing on you, Samuel. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful young man who's crossed over today and symbolically from childhood to manhood. We just pray a blessing on his life, Lord, that you would guide him, that uh, you would help him in the challenges that he'll face, the many, many challenges that we all face as men. We just pray, Lord, that you would guide him and he would run to you, Lord, seeking you through the word of God, through prayer. Lord, uh, thank you for his parents that have guided him. Now he's being launched out there to uh, directly, instead of through the parents, but more directly to deal with decisions directly with you lord and we just pray for him that he is wise and follows the word of god and follows you the holy spirit guiding him lord just pray a blessing on his life that he may have many wonderful adventures and uh, help many people and really share the good news with the lost wherever he goes the many years that you give him lord thank you for all these Experiences, and we just uh, pray this special blessing on his life. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, now that you uh, are a man, you get to take responsibility for your own walk with God. But that doesn't mean you do it by yourself. Um, I have always tried to, and I encourage you to. Find a mentor. Wherever you're at, find a godly man that you can talk to, um, who can encourage you and who can show you where you're messing up. Someone you can trust to tell them stuff that you're like, hey, I don't know what's, what's up with this. What am I supposed to do? Um, you have five friends. That's true. <laughs> we, we are all here. Um, but that's, that's one thing that I learned. Um, is that even though it is your responsibility to be in the word and to draw near to God, he, he will support you in that and God will also um, guide you to the mentor you need at the time. Um, so, yeah, always, always look for mentorship. Grandpa's a good mentor. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> but, and dad too. But it's it's good to get different perspectives sometimes. <laughs> Grab your ankles, would you? <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, one, like Caleb was saying, find a mentor. One mentor to me was uh, Dakota Meyer, just like a a guy who's done a lot with his life and in the military but one of his life mottos is own the dash and owning the dash means you have two dates on your gravestone that you have no control over the second you may have something to do with but the first is your birth and the second is your death and what you can own is everything in between the dash so take charge of your life and do it in a way that's out of humility and compassion for others and follow the guidelines and principles that God set out and laid out before you and take charge of your every opportunity that you can like you, no one's going to care about your life as much as yourself so don't let yourself get in the way of yourself and own your dash and take charge and work in a way that is honoring him and that honors everyone around you and 
continue the legacy that we built, but also create your own legacy and become your own person and um, develop your walk with God in a way that is going to not only support yourself in the best way that you can possibly do mentally and spiritually, but in a way that's going to potentially help your spouse one day or um, your kids eventually. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, so I, a current affair, uh, I got to work with Samuel today. I've had a hard time finding employees lately, so I threw it out there and Samuel, um, anyway, he, he got a work permit and he got to come on board with me today, this morning. So. I call him up and the first thing we do, um, I have him unload six bags of fertilizer out of the back of my truck. And, and two times I said, make sure you don't poke any holes in it. They're heavy, so make no <laughs> holes. And I think it was the fourth or fifth bag. He's all, oh man, fertilizer. <laughs> on the tailgate of the truck, a <laughs> hole in it. And I'm like, oh, dang it. And I said something like, Thanks. yeah, so <laughs> the guys that loaded, loaded it must have put it in there. And he's all, well, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then there was some silence. And I thought, yeah, those, those guys did that. There was some silence. <laughs> and I thought they did. And then he's all, I put the hole in the bag. <laughs> and so I'm not throwing you under the bus. What I'm excited about is your conviction. You couldn't, you could not live with that. And that is so good. It's just a bag of fertilizer. You didn't mean to poke the hole. Not a big deal. You taped the hole. But what I love about that, Samuel, is that you came clean right away. You had that, you had that conviction, and that is something that's going to just bless the Lord, and He's going to bless you back in return. And I appreciated that today. And the rest of the day, you worked great. It, it was wonderful. Really blessed. Thank you. Let me just pray for you, Father. Thank you for Samuel. Lord, thank you for that what you put on his heart mm -hmm. to come clean with the littlest thing, Lord. Father, I pray you would bless him. Continue to bless him. Thank you for the call that you have on his life. Um, we anticipate awesome things from him, Lord, through you. We thank you for that. The Lord, I pray you go before him. Bless the work of his hands. Give him vision and strength. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for this special day. Do we just lift him up to you in the blessed name of Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 I'd like to say a prayer over Sam. I've been spending my privilege to be his pastor for the last few years. And um, he is so talented. I mean, the whole family's talented. And Sam is very talented. He's very gifted. Um, he loves people. He's very compassionate, tender hearted, um, hard working. Um, He's, and he has a great deal of wisdom, and I just really privileged to know him and to be able to minister to him and he to me. And so um, I thank God for you, Samuel, and uh, I'll just say a prayer over you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Samuel right now. Lord God, I pray that you would bless every step from this day forward in his life, that you would... Uh, uh, closed doors that he should not walk through and that the, you would open doors that he should that you would direct his steps and that every step that he takes be anointed of you 
that he would follow the leading of your Holy Spirit, that he, be, he would listen to your voice, Lord God, and that he would give you honor and glory out of his life, and that um, you will bless every stage of his life, Lord, and, and uh, many great days ahead, and we thank you for him. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over him to protect him and keep him safe from all abuse, harm, and danger. And we glorify you, Lord. We thank you for Samuel and for this great family in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I'd like to say that because of Samuel's courage to step out of childhood and into his manhood, I'd like to pronounce a double blessing of favor over his life. All your days. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Anybody else? Before Don gets. I just have a declaration. Um, so God, you say, oh, your fruitfulness season begins now, and I declare you're loose to live and breathe and operate in all the fullness and plan of God on every level designed for you. And you are a planted tree that bears fruit against the current of a flowing river. And I say that your season of fruitfulness begins now. And Psalm 1 3 says, And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and bring forth fruit in its season, but your leaf also shall not wither, and whatever you do because he was a great man or a good king or, or successful or anything like that is because um, he was repentant and he learned his lesson and he stayed in God's path uh, through thick and thin and you know whether he did good or did bad he, he uh, stayed with God and, and I just want that for your life um, to learn lessons when you learn lessons and to just stay with God for the rest of your life you'll even if you don't find monetary success that way, because he doesn't promise that, you'll find success in, in like spiritually and uh, mentally. And I don't know, that's the best kind of blessing in my opinion. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. You're alive, Sam. Thank you. You're a good friend. Good life forever, the power girl, so full life. Full life. So good, so better. So powerful. Your life. 
He's a good man. Yeah, Yeah, coming from being a child of God to a man of God. So here comes the heart. Except that. <laughs> okay, did anybody else have anything? One, two, three. Okay, now we get to the part where. Uh, he's, as you know, he's my favorite sixth born. <laughs> yeah. And it's a privilege and an honor. Um, this song keeps coming through my head. It's uh, humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Uh, greater and higher and higher. And uh, it's kind of a minor song, but uh, that humility thing um, is really important because I remember when I was 16 and uh, the hormones and the testosterone and things were going crazy and all those kind of things. Uh, we have uh, we have a lot of temptations, a lot of things that come against us as young men. And the world is uh, kind of an open book for these temptations and things. And this part of the ceremony, I'm going to give him a purity ring. And uh, this is uh, signifies Actually, I, I, I think you get to say something about it. Right? Oh, you already did. I did. Uh, you... <laughs> so this means... What's this... <laughs> huh? What's this mean? To save myself. Yeah. It's a purity ring. Uh, what, what else did we use to call it? Promise ring? Promise ring. Promise to, to, to save yourself for your, for your wife. I remember when, when all the boys were growing up, we were we would always pray for their wives and when they're little babies and stuff and we pray for your mate and she'll be all godly and, and pretty and, and be like mama except you know better and all that <laughs> but actually uh, it all came true and god loves to answer our prayers um, another thing that comes to mind is uh, the bible speaks about being a servant uh, and it goes right along with being humble because to be a servant, you have to humble yourself. Uh, and uh, greatest is he who is servant of all. And Jesus served us that way. And it's been, it's always been my uh, thing in life to, to try and uh, picture that for my boys, to wash the dishes and mow the lawn and do things <laughs> as a servant. So they're used to it. So when they're out on their own, they're used to a clean house and stuff. And they'll, you know, they're, oh, you know, Whatever, but it's interesting, the more I have opportunity to serve, the more you will have opportunity to serve in whatever direction the Lord points you and those things he opens up. Uh, it's, you have a great heart for that and you like to, you like to work hard. And that's, that's a good thing, you can lift heavy things. And uh, that's, that's a good thing. Anyway, so I'm gonna dedicate this to you and uh, pray a little prayer over you and pray that things go well with this this not only is purity you know physically but it's also mentally and all those other things that come along with all the temptations so uh when you have temptation thoughts or somebody comes up and, or something comes up and tempts you uh remember what this ring re reminds you of and just because you have a thought doesn't mean you have to think it you know you can say no in jesus name i have you know uh, authority over this thought and get out you know those kind of things anyway we're all working that way that's why I say uh, humility is a big thing because we all blow it and when we do blow it to come before the Lord confess repent and he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and those things and sometimes it happens more often than we like but for the most part uh, I think we're coming into a kind of a an end of an age thing where the Bible speaks a lot about 
and uh, the darkness is going to increase. We see it happening, and as that increases, so is the light. And we want to be vehicles, vessels of that light in the Holy Spirit. And it takes humility to, to do that. Say, okay, Lord, fill me up. I'm wrong. You're right. Show me. You know, and it's in His Word. Just get in His Word, and uh, that's really the key. So here's your promise ring. Right. Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, it actually fits. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Mine didn't fit for years. Now it's too small. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to just declare uh, my son Samuel. Um, I just thank you. I want to just lift you up before the Lord. And uh, I humbly thank you and praise you for all the blessings you've given me through this young man. And I thank you that you are going to use him in. Uh, tremendous ways uh, and maybe those are humble and maybe not public which is okay it doesn't matter that in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path just trust him with all your heart I know you will and I just uh, thank you for keeping him safe and thank you for his mate that you have specially for him if uh, that's in um, his future and uh, I thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do through Sam and give you all the blessing and the praise and the worship for all these blessings that you've given us. And uh, I just pray for his uh, manhood now. I know he'll, he'll be uh, in excess of what my manhood was about, <laughs> uh, what, uh, what we do in moderation, our children do in excess, and I just thank you for that, Father. And I know we're coming to a point where there's going to be so much opportunity to share the good news and to make disciples. And I just bless him now in the name of the shed blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to close in prayer. We're going to close in prayer. Hold on. And we're going to say a blessing over the food. But I wanted to read a scripture. The Lord gave me this yesterday uh, for specifically for this. In uh, Numbers chapter 6, Moses gave Aaron the blessings of the Lord to give to the people of Israel. And you guys are probably very familiar with this, but the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And Lord, right now we pray that you would just bless us, food to our bodies, bless the fellowship in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 <laughs> 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 <laughs>